start our meeting tonight with an invocation by Mr. Tim Weissauer. We'll have our Pledge of Allegiance by Commissioner, Chairman, Mr. Fred Hawkins. And we'll have our national anthem sung by Miguel De Leon. Was that close enough? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. He's a student from Harmony High School, and he's going to play the cello for us. We'll have our mission statement by Miss Carrie Avery. How's it going, Carrie? And we will have our translation services by Mrs. Or excuse me, Senora Belinda Reyes. Oh, well done, oh, Mr. I'm sorry. All right. So uh, I'd ask everybody before you stand if you could silence your uh, cell phones or any uh, devices you have, and then please stand. Sir, let Frank get by. <coughs> All right, let us pray. God, we come before you this evening always grateful, first and foremost, for your love, your grace, and your mercy that you bestow to each one of us. The opportunity we have to gather here this evening to consider the uh, business of the school district, the important decisions that lay before us that would ultimately honor our taxpayers, serve our students, and lift up our community. We ask for discernment for our board that we make decisions that ultimately bring honor and glory to you. We thank you for the dedicated staff that work so hard every single day in the school district to serve and honor our students and to bring a future and a hope to them that will uh, create a pathway of great success and opportunity in their lives. We thank you for the countless blessings and one of them being the privilege and honor in this country to pray to you freely without reprisal and with joy in our hearts. It's in Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. Mr. Hawkins? Please join me in honoring our flag and country. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Miguel, you may be seated. Not you, Miss Avery. <laughs> Hello. The district mission statement is inspiring all learners to reach their highest potential as responsible, productive citizens. Thank you. Ms. Reyes. Gracias. You have uh, <laughs> positive comments from the board now. I'll start from over here, Mr. Wheeler. Well, I got to start because we've got two celebrities in the audience. Before I go any further, he's not a celebrity, he's a friend. Celebrity. Commissioner Hawkins, hello. I didn't see you sitting out there. I apologize. Not that you're not a celebrity, but we've got the <laughs> principal of the year. Which I know you're here for, uh, Ms. Nadia Winston. Um, I've known her since she was a principal first at Highlands Elementary. 
and she did a great job there. And then she went to Westside K-8 when it went, and I represent that area. I, my phone was burning, ringing off the hook. You took that school over, you settled it down. And then when you left, I had teachers of yours calling me saying, why are you taking Ms. Winston away? Um, but you're just, you're a great educator. We appreciate all your leadership. And I know you're doing a great job at Central. And then we have the assistant principal of the year, Ms. Ponzoa who I've known for many years, let's not go, she knew both my kids, Celebration High School, and this morning um, at Celebration High School, we had the top 10 breakfast, and uh, uh, one of your former colleagues, Ms. Myers, and I, when I was, we said, yay, that one, she's like, yeah, I miss her so much, but we really appreciate you, and Ms. Myers helped shepherd both my kids, too, especially my son, who graduated last year, we appreciate you, and you guys are both great educators, I'm sure you're here for that, but let's give them a round of applause right now anyways. <laughs> one of the problems having a board member on so long. I know all this about these people. <laughs> um, I also need to recognize from this morning, we had our top 10 junior breakfast for Osceola and Celebration High School students. The students and the parents were great, but I need to do some thank yous. Uh, Jim Bowie from UCF, he was there for, this, for the students. Uh, Dr. Rebecca Prevos from Florida Hospital was there. She did a great job. Dr. Mike Band was there. He did a great job. Um, um, Clint and Monica Searcy, who are both General Electric executives and great community leaders, they were there. I appreciate them. And finally, but not, not least, the city of Kissimmee, Mayor Alvarez was there, and one of their assistant city attorneys, Celia Thacker, who we all know her dad pretty well, was there. They all did a great job. I just want to publicly thank them all for what they did, along with the uh, community relations team, our food service team, Dr. Pace, uh, Mr. Gilbert hosting. It was just a great event all around for our kids. And finally, I had my last Four Corners Charter School. For those of you who don't know, I'm off the school board next month. I had my last Four Corners Charter School Board meeting, and when you're elected from District 1, the District 1 representative has a permanent seat on that board. For years, they've needed a covered play area. A thousand students would use it every day, and in the summer, there'd be a thousand kids using it every day also. And so today, I want to recognize both Mr. Booth and Mr. Weissar, who's on that board with me. We, we occupy three seats. We approved $122,000 for the design of it so that it moves forward so we can get pricing to actually get this done for the kids in that community. And I just want to share this with the board while I'm talking about covered play areas. We need those at not just the charter school. I mean, if you go on the west side of the county, west of Thacker Avenue, there's no county parks. The only parks out there, the only recreational facilities is Celebration K-8. Celebration High School, Westside K-8, and Four Corners Charter School. So I'd like to see, and I think we really need to look at covering areas at our high schools and our, and our middle schools and elementary schools. we have it because we don't have gyms. But our high schools, those would be used more all over, Harmony, Gateway, et cetera. I know it's expensive. I know that we've got all kinds of needs. But I also know that this, we've got a countywide school district, and unfortunately, for better or worse, we are the only recreational outlet for a lot of kids, and kids would use it all the time, which is not to say our, our facilities don't get used, but we can always use more access for our kids. So that's all I want, I want to say is I want to thank Mr. Booth, Mr. Weiser, and everybody who showed up today, and now I will yield the floor. One more time. You only got one more time for positive. Are you going to have some good positive comments at your next meeting? Absolutely, Mr. Booth. Okay, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. And, and just... Uh, since you brought that up, I wanted to recognize Ms. Castillo. She's, she'll be taking over. Uh, she was uh, recently elected to Mr. Wheeler's seat. I know I've introduced her at like every meeting that we've had, but that's okay. Put her on the spot. Just, just a note, uh, Terry, that generally we like to, when we have a presentation, we don't like to preempt that in our positive comments <laughs> by, um, by uh, you know, spoiling. The, but Mr. Wheeler loves to do that, and that's okay. We love him for it. We, we do that. Mr. Booth just doesn't do it. <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> Welcome. Mr. Soto? I'm not going to spoil any presentations tonight. Mm. <laughs> okay, good. All right, Mr. Thacker. I'm good, thank you. Mr. Weiser? I'll just make sure that I write Mr. Wheeler's positive comments for his last meeting. So All right, I bet that he won't read any of them. <laughs> uh, I, let, I'll go real quick, Dr. Pace, before I turn it over, because I, I just kind of wanted to say I, I also had my top ten breakfast, and I wanted to thank Commissioner Hawkins, who was there. I want to thank Representative uh, Mike LaRosa, who was there. I wanted to thank our U.S. Congressman Darren Soto, who was there, came and, and spoke with the kids. We had a great network. I know I was uh, – 
Darren actually, uh, excuse me, Congressman Soto actually left after I did. Uh, he was there uh, engaging with students, so I appreciate uh, all he's doing for our students. I know we had, uh, and, 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 the, and the program works. Uh, I have one of our students that had reached out to me, and I know it's probably getting with, with uh, the congressman as well about writing some letters of recommendation for her to a really highly competitive university. She was also uh, able to come and speak to the group and and uh, encourage those young folks who are junior. She's now a senior. An awesome story, first generation American uh, parents from the Dominican uh, Republic who have came here to this community and um, and start a new life. And um, you know, she, she tells a very interesting story of, you know, one teacher, one teacher in fifth grade that recognized how special she was and that really changed her life. And uh, it's a great story. And, and, and I, I met her originally back when she was in middle school on a youth leadership program. So I've, I've interacted with her a few times throughout the years, but just a wonderful, wonderful young lady. And I, I reached out to uh, several of our teachers uh, who had her over the years, and, and the responses I received are, are simply amazing. So um, special young lady, Jessica Santos, and um, we appreciate uh, her. I want to thank her, too, for coming and speaking to the group that day. So, And thank all of you, Commissioner Hawkins, you're here. So thank you very much for being a part of that program, as you have been every year. Dr. Pace? Yes, sir. Um, at your desks, um, board members, you have Hot Off the Press from the American School and University magazine, the latest rankings of the top 100 or the largest 100 districts across the country. This is lag data. It's from 2016, but we have moved up from 67 to 64 out of the top, the largest 100 school districts across the country, and we are now 12th in the state with a growth in the last 10 years of 21% in terms of our student enrollment. So I thought, felt like that was important information to share with you and also with our community. Thank you, Mr. Clint, for getting that to us. And I also, while Commissioner Hawkins is here, wanted to make sure that the board members were aware we want to express our extreme thanks to our county commission who recently approved funding to support YMCA programs in five of our middle schools after school. They experienced some significant cuts at the state level and we're not going to be able to sustain those after school programs and the county commission stepped up to make that possible. So we're really excited and appreciative that we'll be able to offer the YMCA starting Monday at Denjon, Horizon, Neptune, St. Cloud and Westside for quality after school middle school programs. So thank you, Commissioner Hawkins and the rest of your group. Thanks, Fred. Thank you. Mr. Thacker, I know had something to add. And uh, Commissioner Hawkins, too, I, I was remiss to not mention this a minute ago. Uh, we know that the county just approved their budget in the last uh, few weeks, and uh, school board uh, really appreciates what you've done with your, with our school service safety officers. We absolutely could not do it without the county, the two cities. Um, it's extremely important to know the amount of money that it takes to do that for the citizens to know that the input the county has and the two cities, as well as the school board. Um, I can tell you uh, from uh, Florida School Board Association meetings I've been to, uh, we are extremely fortunate to enjoy that relationship. Uh, other counties do not have that relationship, and uh, I can tell you we would not be able to carry that ball by ourselves as a school district. So please pass that on to your uh, colleagues as well. And I know I've had that conversation with uh, Mr. Fisher uh, also, so thank you very, very much for that support. And board, just... Uh, I think you're aware, but uh, the last St. Cloud City Commission meeting a couple of days ago, last week, um, I'd gone and uh, they were finishing up their budget and uh, for their final approval and went and thanked them uh, also for the uh, amount of help they provided to us over the years, and particularly this year with the amount of help they provided us. Uh, we are truly getting uh, school safety officers, I think, that are providing more than just safety. They're providing access to children who don't normally see uh, people in uniform uh, that may not have some a lot of or may have distrust for people in uniform, and that's a huge subliminal benefit to this whole uh, process. So, thank Absolutely. you very much, County, Fred, and uh, both the cities. So, Chairman, I feel like <clears throat> I'm the only one who hasn't thanked Commissioner Hawkins for something. No, no. So, Commissioner, I want to thank you for letting me marry your sister. <laughs> <laughs> he said he didn't allow it. Right, we had that conversation. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> He's thinking, if only I had a say in that matter, why it's higher. But, 
you're stuck. I know Mr. Wheeler had something. Yeah, I want to just, uh, first off, I want to go back to what uh, we got from uh, Dr. Pace. Um, just to give you some perspective, when I first got elected in 2002, we had just over 40,000 students. Now we have over 65,000, and the number is just growing and growing and growing. So that's just some perspective. But we're all, going back to the county for a second. The county, they've been a great partner, but just over the years, with our OLA efforts, the county has stepped up many, many, many years and made lobbying for school dollars their top lobbying, lobbying priority for, with OLA. And to the point of my colleagues up here, that doesn't happen with government agencies in the rest of the state. Another city or another county won't put school funding as the top of their lobbying priority list. So we appreciate the partnership and the synergy that we've got with the county and have always had. And um, Fred, you've been a great partner to work with. You've been a great colleague to work with. And uh, the rest of your colleagues, too, please pass along my thanks for lobbying efforts. It's greatly appreciated. And we've gotten results, too. I mean, it's not just, the, you know, we've gotten a lot of money because of the, those efforts. So thank you for that. Yep. Not that the state's ever listened, <laughs> but to be <laughs> We but sometimes we sometimes do okay. Sometimes, we, sometimes we, we've done we'll okay. Peel a little bit out of there. No, and actually, what Mr. Wheeler says is absolutely correct. Uh, just for those of you in the audience, I mean, just go west to Polk County. I think they have 17 municipalities, 17 elected city councils. <laughs> you know, we do have the benefit of just having two, and we have a great county commission, and we work very well with our city councils, our St. Cloud City Council, and I know Kissimmee is a commission. Uh, but we work well with all of them, and we've got a great, a strong group, and we, we benefit from only having two, certainly, uh, but but it is fantastic. I, I think Mr. Thacker said you, you can go across the state and you can hear some real horror stories about how communities working against each other uh, within the same county, so we do appreciate that. You have to go across the state. You can go next door. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I wasn't going to name any in particular. But, uh, all right, moving on. We do have our presentation, and those why, uh, this is why we have Ms. Avery and Commissioner Hawkins, I believe, our presentation from uh, Charter Communications to the Education Foundation. Ms. Avery, that's who I have on my list. Correct. They, call, they told me to call you up. Yes. Okay. At this time, I'd like to turn the microphone over to Scott and Leah. Uh, we just wanted to say utmost our appreciation for Charter Communications sponsorship throughout the years. And again, this year, they're going to be a great community partner. And I think Scott might want to share a little bit about that. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. Thank you, Superintendent Pace, uh, Mr. Booth. Uh, school board members and staff. My name is Scott McCallum. I'm Director of uh, Corporate uh, Government Affairs for the Central Florida area for Charter Communications. We are the parent company of Spectrum branded products. And I just want to say that I've had a, a great experience uh, interacting with the Education Foundation for Osceola County over the past several years. I've had an oppor opportunity to come out and visit and learn about the wide range of services to students and families in Osceola County, the passports to programs tour. I was most impressed with the assistance for college prep that got college uh, really, uh, my nephew was actually applying for college at the time and I thought what a great resource it would be if he lived here locally. So uh, we really appreciate the services that the Education Foundation provides to the school district. And so in light of that, we want to make sure that we do keep supporting the Education Foundation. Um, it really caught my eye the, the quote of inspiring all learners to reach their highest potential because we know that to for students to reach their highest potential how important uh, internet access is and broadband connectivity and digital literacy this is a priority for charter communications and spectrum throughout our 41 state footprint to bridge the digital divide and make sure that students and families have access to broadband for all types of resources students as we enter the uh, era of one-to-one -one devices and you utilizing uh, laptops and computers at home to complete coursework, as well as for adults and for the rest of our community uh, to make sure that they have access for uh, jobs and employment and education and connecting with family. So we're really excited to talk about our Spectrum Internet Assist assists program uh, you may already be familiar with it this is a program that is uh, specifically for students 
and families who uh, qualify for free and reduced lunch. It's also available to senior citizens who qualify for supplemental security income. And this provides a very low cost connection to the internet. Uh, it's 30 megs of speed, which is really great for streaming and downloading material for students to connect for their homework and to complete their assignments for only $14.95 a month. So this really helps out our families that are in need. This is also available again to seniors so we're very proud of that um, so we really feel strongly about uh, bridging the digital divide and we hope that the funds that we are donating to the uh, foundation this year will be used towards all of the great programs they have and encouraging students to connect to the internet and families to bridge the digital divide so it's my distinct pleasure uh, to present my colleague leah brown leah is uh, my greatest colleague at spectrum uh, she works across three states to champion our Spectrum Internet Assist program in the southeast. And uh, Leah is really happy to come all the way over from Sarasota today to present a check for $5,000 to the Education Foundation. And we come often. And if we could, that'll bring us to our next presentation. If uh, Evelyn Herrera Jackson could go. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. Being instructed by the illustrious Frank Kruppenbacher to be back at the podium. Members of the board, uh, Scott reports to Marva Johnson, who, as many of you know, is chairman of the State Board of Education. And I just wanted to publicly thank you, Scott, and let Marva know how much I appreciate the fact that you all are going to help get Charter to do some commercials for public service advertisements promoting the Osceola County Public School District and how wonderful it is. We love doing that. Yes, we've partnered with the Education Foundation in the past to do PSAs, and so we love the partnership with the Education Foundation like, and with the school district. I like the free part that you're going to do. <laughs> public service announcement. I mean, there you go. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. Next we have our, yes, let's give them a big round of applause. <laughs> Next we have a proclamation for National Domestic Violence Awareness Month, Ms. Evelyn Herrera Jackson. She is the Director of Outreach Services with Help Now of Osceola. Evelyn actually, um, this is Domestic Violence Awareness Month, and she actually ended up invited to participate on a university panel this evening, so you have me instead. I'm Tammy Douglas, I'm yep. the Executive Director of Help Now Vasiola, and we are incredibly honored to be here this evening and appreciative of you allowing this opportunity to proclaim with us that October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month and recognize how family violence affects children in our schools and the efforts it takes with the teachers recognizing that and managing the challenges that come along with it. And I also really want to take this opportunity to commend your student services folks um, and the work that they've done with us over the years, over the last decade actually, in bringing teen dating violence awareness education to students in Osceola County and the amazing work that's happened and your student service as folks are just incredible. So thank you for that. So um, without any further ado, we have brought some um, young people with us today to read the proclamation to you, if we may. Thank you again. Please. Um, good afternoon. My name is Valgensa Camiso. I am in eighth grade and I go to Val 
I go to Kissimmee Middle School. Whereas Help Now is a certified domestic violence center that has provided services for victim survivors and the children who witnessed domestic violence in Osceola County for the past 35 years. Whereas between 3.3 million and 10 million children in the United States live in a household where domestic violence is present. Good afternoon, my name is Angel Batista and I am in ninth grade and I go to Osceola High School. Whereas domestic violence in the childhood is directly correlated with difficulties learning, lower IQ scores, deficiencies in visual motor skills and problems with attention and memory, insomnia, irritability, distractibility, and truancy and Good afternoon, I'm Azaria and I'm in 10th grade at Osceola High School. Whereas students have shown this, the school age children who witness violence exhibit a range of problem behaviors, including depression, anxiety, violence towards peers, and whereas childhood exposure to family violence disrupt conductive and so social development and lead to any array of virus outcomes as violence and victimization. Good afternoon. You can pull that down if you want. There you go. Good afternoon. I'm Carlos Garcia. I'm in seventh grade and I go to Reborn Christian Academy. Whereas teen dating violence can increase the risk of later substance use, mental health problems, sexual risk behaviors, teen pregnancy, suicide, weight control, and ongoing difficulties with inmate partner relationships. Hi, I'm Andy Hinman. I'm the Children's Advocate at the Outreach Office. Whereas by providing young people with education about healthy relationships and re relationship skills and by changing attitudes that support violence, we recognize that dating violence can be prevented. And Hello, I'm Noel and I'm the Children's Advocate at the shelter. Now, therefore, we, the Osceola County School Board, do hereby proclaim October 2018 as National Domestic Violence Awareness Month and call upon the citizens of our community to join us in working towards the elimination of personal and institutional violence against all persons. Thank you. So moved. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Thacker, second by Mr. Wheeler. Uh, board, is there any discussion? I just wanted to say, you young people, come up here. I just wanted to say thank you very much. You did a great job, by the way. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Booth took the words out of my mouth. You all did really, really well. Very, it takes very a lot of courage to come up here and in a public meeting and, and stand in front of uh, somebody as somebody as ugly as Mr. Clarence Thacker <laughs> and do that. But uh, you guys did a, did a great job. So congratulations to you. Mr. Weiser. Yeah, I just want to make honestly the same comment I make every year that we do this. It's to help now and thank you for your work and everything you do in this community and for being a voice for those that sometimes need that voice and to be a help that comes alongside of them at a time of desperate need. And, uh, for helping lead the way and making sure that we communicate to our students in this community the importance of healthy relationships and what that really can and should look like. So thank you guys for your continued work in Osceola County. Good. So I have a motion and a second. Board, all those in favor, state aye. Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> How about Dr. Respis, Dr. Reinhardt, and Mr. Allen? Thanks again, Fred. Since, uh, since Jay stole your thunder a little bit. <laughs> I couldn't help myself. <laughs> Good evening. It's our pleasure to recognize our principals this month and expressing support for the nation's principals by designating the month of October in this year of 2018 as National Principals Month. Whereas the School District of Osceola County has declared the month of October 2018 as National Principals Month in coordination with the efforts of the National Association of Elementary School Principals, the American Federation of School Administrators, and the National Association of Secondary School Principals, working with the U.S. Congress to designate National Principals Month and resolutions thereof. 
whereas the vision, dedication, and determination of a principal provides the mobilizing force behind any school reform effort. Whereas principals are expected to be educational visionaries, instructional leaders, assessment experts, disciplinarians, community builders, public relations experts, budget an analysts, facility managers, special programs administrators, and guardians of various legal, contractual, and policy mandates and initiatives, as well as being entrusted with the education and the development of young people the most valuable resource. Whereas principals will play a vital role in the successful implementation of the Every Student Succeeds Act, whereas principals set the academic tone for their schools and work collaboratively with teachers to develop and maintain high curriculum standards, develop mission statements, and set performance goals and objectives for schools to achieve educational excellence. Whereas the school district of Osceola County honors such ex exemplary elementary and middle level private and independent school leaders committed to serving students from pre-kindergarten to eighth grade in their profession. And whereas school district of Osceola County recognizes outstanding middle and high school principals who have succeeded in providing high quality learning opportunities for their students as well as their exemplary contributions to the profession. Whereas to honor and recognize the contribution of all school principals and assistant principals at gr all grade levels to the success of students in Florida elementary and secondary schools and to encourage residents of Florida to observe National Principals Month with appropriate ceremonies and activities that promote awareness of school leadership's <laughs> role in ensuring that every child has access to a high quality education. Be it resolved, in honor of the service of all elementary, middle level, and high school principals, and to recognize the importance of their school leadership so that every child has access to a high quality education, and to celebrate school leader accomplishments, the month of October 2018 is hereby designated in the school district of Osceola County to be National Principals Month. Motion to approve. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Weissar, a second by Mr. Wheeler, is that correct? Yeah, Mr. Weissar? Yeah, I just want to make a brief comment. Um, this is uh, very important, and some of you that have heard me share this story, um, <clears throat> I apologize after you hear it again, but I actually attribute to the fact that I'm sitting on this board tonight to one of my principals, and it was Mr. John C. White, a former assistant principal at Osceola High School, and Mr. Paradiso was the principal at the time. And the difference that a principal can make, not just in the learning that takes place on a campus, but in the relationships that are built and developed with students, and the opportunity and the willingness to really understand, relate to, and to connect with students and encourage them on pathways that maybe they may not even see for themselves, but yet to encourage them to follow what ultimately their success might look like, uh, can't be understated. And um, I know that I owe a lot to Mr. White and his leadership and his counsel in my life when I was a very fun and very excitable teenager um, <laughs> and uh, his counsel I, I think uh, made a tremendous impact on me he's somebody that even all these years later when I think back I always remember the time sitting in his office yes very frequently um, <laughs> having conversations but they weren't really always conversations about me being in trouble as much as it was about him encouraging me to make better choices to be a better person and to pursue what he knew I was capable of and so I think uh, this recognition is uh, well deserved across our state and certainly in this community because we have phenomenal principals that serve every single day and are not only managers of very important assets, physical assets in the community, but are academic and inspirational leaders that drive instruction every single day on our campuses. So I couldn't be more proud to vote for this. Thank you, Mr. Washer Board. Anybody else? Here, here. I'll uh, call for it. We have a motion and a second, so I'll call for a vote. All those in favor, state aye. 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 Motion carries five to zero. Board, oh, I'll just turn it over to Dr. Pace. How about that? Well, while Mr. Wheeler did steal a little bit of our thunder tonight, we are not going to be dissuaded from doing formal recognition that is so very well deserved. Board, I am pleased to recognize with your support and approval tonight our Principal of the Year for 2018, Ms. Nadia Winston. I first had the opportunity to work with Nadia as a district department, departmental supervisor, not hers, but otherwise, when she served as the principal at Highlands Elementary School. She did exemplary work there. 
She's done exemplary work at Westside K-8, our largest K-8 school, and one that has a tremendous amount of mobility and, and significant challenges sometimes. And now she has taken the reins at Central Avenue and is again already inspiring both adults and children in that community to be their very best selves. And so I couldn't be more pleased tonight to present Miss Nadia Winston, our Principal of the Year. I don't feel bad about mentioning it earlier. <laughs> I'm sure you don't, Mr. Butler. <laughs> Congratulations, Ms. Wilson. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for all you do. Would you like to say a few words? You're more than welcome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't mean to put you on the spot, but I did. <laughs> Well, I will say that um, I thank this district, I thank this board, um, our superintendent, and all of the support that I've had over the years. Started my teaching career here, um, and my father also uh, worked and retired in this district after being in the military for numerous years or retiring from the military. So I definitely owe uh, this district all of my career and my education, and I really thank you for the opportunity to serve you. And thank you. Our district. I think this community owes you. Right. So we thank do. you. We do. <laughs> thank you. And now, board, I'm also pleased to recognize, with your support and approval tonight, our assistant principal of the year, Miss Yvette Ponzoa. I have had the opportunity to watch Miss Ponzoa's career grow and blossom. And she served for a long time at Celebration High School, did a tremendous amount of effort to help build the IB program to success there, as well as opportunities for all students that we serve at Celebration. And now she has taken the reins to do the same work with Mr. Long and his team at Gateway High School. And we are very excited. She embraced being a Panther from the very beginning. So I am pleased to recognize board Ms. Yvette Ponzoa, our Assistant Principal of the Year. Before you sit down, you, you, you can say a few words, too. <laughs> uh, I just want to thank everybody for the opportunity. Um, I've been in this district now for, I think, 17 years. Um, thank you to the board, uh, Dr. Pace, everyone. Dr. Reinhardt hired me as an assistant principal, so thank you. Thank you. I'd thank you. Oh, and thank you to my new Gateway Panther family thank for right. supporting me. Congratulations. First off, I missed the purple hair. That's the first thing. Well, it's kind of. I know. Okay. okay. <laughs> but I just want to share, um, you know, I spent a lot of time at Celebration High School, so I got to work with Miss Ponzoa pretty closely for many, many years. And, you know, on more than one occasion, I remember I'd come in and I'd say, I, I need to... I need to find something about a student that was a very intimate in my life. And but but anything I asked you though, the point I want to make is that it was boom like that. And, and I've worked with a lot of assistant principals, and you are you've been so good at what you do that you make it look easy and effortless. Okay. I mean, because a lot of assistant principals I've worked with, I'll walk in and ask them the same kind of questions I ask you, and it's like they get flustered and it just, they just they just aren't as organized so you spoiled me good good thing I'm getting off the board and my kids are done but I'm sure that at Gateway you're gonna bring that same professionalism and the fact that you cared about every single student and, and I just appreciate everything you did at celebration I'm sure you're doing a great job out of Gateway so thank you thank much you. appreciated thank you thank you thank you, yep. thank you. we appreciate it So, board, we've come to the time where we're open for public comment. Uh, certainly, if 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 you were here for some other reason and you don't want to stay for the rest of the meeting, this would be yeah. There we go. Uh, <laughs> and you would like to, board? We do ask that you fill out the yellow card in the back. But if you haven't done that, you still can come speak uh, if you would like to. So, um, it, you don't have to fill out the card. I mean, you can as you speak. So, 
At this time, I'll ask if we have anybody for public comment. So many things to say. Nobody? All right. Should I go grab one of those yellow things? No, no. it's okay. No. No. no you, you don't you, need one. Not from you. We don't need any more comment from you. Ruben, please disconnect the microphone. Yeah. No, let me use that one. So, board, uh, we have come to the time in our meeting that we have a uh, call for agenda modifications. Board, do we have any? Mr. Wheeler. I'm good. Mr. Soto. Uh -oh. Mr. Thacker. No, sir. Mr. Weissart. Dr. Pace, we're good. Board on the consent agenda. Move for approval of the consent agenda. Second. So, I have a motion by Mr. Thacker, a second by Mr. Soto. Board, all those in favor, state aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries five to zero. Board, that brings us to our information items, and I'll ask Mr. Pengelly. Did I say it right? Yeah. All right. I better have since I asked you before the meeting. Yeah, right. Thank you. Uh, board Superintendent, thank you uh, for allowing us to give the, this report on the school district's investment portfolio. Um, Wait for us to get all set up here. Okay, great. Um, so this is going to cover the period uh, for the second quarter, so uh, March uh, through uh, at the end of June. Um, and as we usually like to do, we'll give you a little backdrop for uh, what's going on in the market uh, or what's been going on in the market. Uh, so generally, the economy has been doing well, as we've been saying uh, for the past couple quarters here. Um, you know, usually we look at the national uh, GDP, overall economic growth. I thought it would be interesting to actually show sort of the breakdown on a state-by-state -state basis. Uh, Florida uh, ranks sort of in the top part of the, uh, the pack uh, at number 11 if you look at where we were uh, in Q1 in terms of growth. And as you would imagine, the drivers of the growth uh, were uh, – related to real estate construction growth. As you look around, you see a lot of uh, growth going on. Uh, also agriculture, uh, agriculture and uh, forestry, fishing, hunting, a uh, big part of the, the, uh, the growth in Florida. Um, so GDP uh, for the overall country was 2.2 for the fir first quarter, and the second quarter it was 4.2%. Uh, uh, currently, the projection among economists are that we're going to be somewhere in the 3% range uh, which would put this year ahead of where we were over the past couple years in terms of overall growth. So uh, the backdrop of uh, this strong economic growth uh, means that the Fed has really had a license to continue its program of raising interest rates. And uh, right here uh, over the past couple weeks, we had the Federal Reserve come out and increase short-term rates again by another 0.25%. Uh, um, so uh, along with that increase in rates, they actually increased their projection uh, for the remainder of the year and for next year. So this year they're projecting they're going to raise rates another 0.25%, uh, another three more times next year for a total of 1% between now and the end of next year, uh, which, as we've said before, uh, as they raise interest rates, that translates directly to increased earnings in your, your portfolio. So. Um, the p picture continues to look very good, uh, again, against this backdrop of strong uh, domestic economic growth. Um, so along with that, along with that, uh, we always have to watch the market values of your existing securities. So that's uh, one of those things in the bond market where as interest rates go up, uh, your yields increase, so the actual dollars flowing in increases, so that's good. Uh, but the value of your existing securities uh, goes down. It moves in the opposite direction. So that's reflected in the total return numbers that we'll show uh, in a second. Um, again, the good news is that the actual dollars that are coming into the school district, that's what you can actually spend as opposed to what's uh, recorded on paper, uh, has been steadily increasing with the rising yields. Um, if we look over the past two years, uh, the quarterly earnings have increased from 340000 up to 411000 uh, So, uh, you know, that translates into more dollars that are available to, uh, to the district, and you're up to something like $1.6 million uh, in annual earnings at this point and projected to continue to increase. Uh, so the outlook is very good. If we go, you do yes. Health, do you do health insurance? Because you you give us the best financial news of anybody who comes. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Well, I wish it, I could attribute it to something we do, but uh, it really is just, you know, the good economy. Yeah, it's been the good economy. Um, so the portfolio. It's, it's called the Trump train, Mr. Wheeler. It's called the Trump train. <laughs> so the, uh, the portfolio continues to be uh, well diversified um, as required by your investment objectives. It's largely invested in Treasury and agency securities. Uh, you know, one of the uh, uh, concerns that always exists is that when you go into a recessionary period, uh, that there tends to be a pullback in the market. Uh, investors flee things like the stock market, but then they uh, go into the safety of treasuries, uh, agency securities, high quality corporates, and those are the kind of instruments that you all are holding in your portfolio. Um, in terms of return, can't really see across there. Uh, the return for the year was 0.31% uh, for the year ending 630. Uh, so you outperformed the benchmark by 0.22%. Uh, for the quarter, it was 0.34%, outperforming the benchmark by 0, uh, by 0.12%. Uh, we've generally kept uh, the average maturity duration of the portfolios in line with the benchmark uh, and are using the allocations to corporates and credit instruments to add uh, extra yield in the portfolio. Um, we really haven't made a significant shift in strategy. Uh, it's really just been uh, rebalancing the portfolio on a monthly basis uh, where we see relative value uh, based on what's available in the market, uh, looking at uh, new issues that come to market, trying to get a little extra yield out of those. Uh, but no major strategy shifts since uh, interest rates started, uh, started increasing. Uh, we also manage the 2017 capital outlay bond proceeds portfolio. Uh, that portfolio was uh, invested in a set of securities based on the projected expenditure schedule for those funds. Uh, as the securities mature, uh, they then get moved into a liquidity vehicle uh, for expenditure on uh, whatever is required by the uh, projects associated with that uh, bond deal. Uh, and then lastly, uh, the portfolio was in compliance with the investment policy uh, as of 6.30 at the end of the uh, second quarter, uh, both across sectors and on an individual issuer basis. Um, so with that, uh, questions? Richard, thank you for a very organized presentation that brings good news. We need okay. more good news. Thank you. Glad to bring good news. Lord, okay. any further questions? Only that his colleague can come if we need to borrow money and give news in the opposite right, direction. No, no, I'm fully aware of that, too. He's a, and there's, right, I get that. You know, I'll take what I can get. <laughs> Thank you, sir. We All appreciate right. it. Thank, Thank you. you. For Thanks, Richard. Thank you. Board, that brings us to items uh, under number 14, which is our regular facilities agenda. If you do, um, if they're, just to, just to make note, I want to say that Item 14.05 does approve items 1 through 4. I will, which is an unusual move. I'm going to make a motion to approve item 14.05 as submitted. Discussion. Okay. I have a motion by Mr. Wheeler, a second by Mr. Soto, and discussion. Mr. Um, Wheeler? Uh, you know, I know that there's the $33.4 million project on Den John from Pirtle here, and typically I would pull that out and want to vote on that separately. But I've got it, Richard, your team did such a good job at the workshop presenting on the schedule and the way everything was that I felt, you know, and I, and I even asked you at that meeting, do you need two more weeks? Because it's a tight schedule. And you said no. Mr. Clinch said no. And everybody felt good about it. That's why, again, typically I would pull that out separately. Um, but you, you guys really did a, uh, did a really good job at the workshop. So I feel comfortable with all of this. Yeah, I, absolutely. I concur. Thank you very much. Yep, so we have a motion and a second. Board, is there any further discussion? Yeah, yeah if you bring another $33 million project, I may not, it, it may get pulled off. <laughs> All right. Uh, hey, note to Dr. Face. Don't put one on the next meeting agenda. Right, 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 right. right. <laughs> no. So, board, all those in favor, state aye. Aye. Any opposed? The uh, motion carries five to zero. Uh, that brings us to our attorney's report. Mr. Krubbebach. Uh, two items at the last meeting, uh, there was a discussion regarding the concept of uh, the appropriateness of a resolution to the state of Florida regarding 
any dollars that were not dispersed to the districts that came from the federal government as a the result of the hurricane with the displacement of students from Puerto Rico to Florida. Um, as of right now, I could tell you I recommend against uh, any resolution for the following reason. The dollars that were allocated were allocated by the state as follows. The, the students, there's a local <coughs> portion and a state portion of the FEFP. That portion of the local funding for the FEFP FP was remitted back to the districts. That portion of the state funding for the FEFP for those students was remitted back to the state treasury. The finance department, Ms. Graber has advised me that as to the cost we incurred, we received reimbursement for those costs, right? So um, if we were to do a resolution requesting more dollars, my recommendation would be only that that be tied to a specific program or some specific need in addition to what the FEFP funded for those students who are still with us from Puerto Rico. But to do a resolution that just asks for more money would be counterproductive to the, I think, the credibility of the district, and I don't think well received in Tallahassee. And that's not something, given the importance of what we do work on, you don't want to impair that credibility. Mr. Krebbebacher, I know uh, you have two items, but could we go ahead and discuss this one yes. first? And uh, Mr. Thacker? Um, I hear you, and I, I don't necessarily disagree with you. But um, once again, Osceola is greatly impacted by our low property values. We're greatly impacted by the governor's rollback and legislators' rollback on our property values for taxes. And we continue to be hammered for low property values, and those with high property values are greatly rewarded over the amount of services they're providing. And when you look at the number of students and the percentage of the students that we have in this county that were impacted, versus the percentages of some of the other counties who receive more money than we do, quite frankly, I don't believe it's right. I understand you can't. We've got to pick our battles, and I I'll right. accept your recommendation. Mr. Thacker, I'm in complete agreement with me. The underlying problem is that the very formula that everything is based on is what is flawed. Yes. And continues and we continue to, to be so it, hurt by it, Yes, as our students are, yes. and our teachers, and our staff. Yep. Mr. Uh, Wheeler? Um, I heard everything you said, Mr. Kruppenbacher, so i got to ask Dr. Pace a question. I don't know if you're prepared to answer it. So are there programs that we could offer to these students that we're not offering that we could go and request these funds for based on the criteria that Mr. Kruppenbacher set out? Because I guess the state wants to fund some programs for these students, so let's come up with programs that they can no, fund. No, no, no. The state has not said they want to fund any no. programs. What I've said is if you're going to ask for more money, then you need to tie it. Okay, I am looking. Uh, okay, I apologize. Mr. Mr. Kruppenbacher's yes. counsel <laughs> is to tie the money to programs for these students. So are there programs you think that, you, that, we, that we can offer or that we should be offering that we're not because of resources that we need to make an effort to get the resources for for these students? Not at this time, sir. Maybe at another time in the next week or two. <laughs> uh, Mr. Wessar. Yeah, just a point of clarity, Mr. Kruppenbacher, my understanding was that it was tied to a, a um, service that was being provided to the students, not something that going forward we would look to add on to provide to the students. Yeah, I, I think you're right, and I think the state's position would be they have been repaid for what they already provided. This, this real argument goes to the funding floor argument right yep. so a couple things I want to comment on um, first of all thank you dr. pace and Ms. Graver and staff and Frank uh, for um, 
following up on the research that was requested uh, by the board to make sure that we can make a sound decision regarding this. I appreciate your, your effort to make that happen. The second point I would make uh, to Mr. Thacker, I understand where you're coming from completely, and I think what this becomes is one more of those um, aspects that we use in our conversation and in our argument about how the formula is flawed and how we continue to be impacted. And this becomes one. So, you know, we have the conversation on an ongoing basis that it's flawed, it's not working right, we're adversely affected. Um, but they look at it and go, well, it, it is what it is, it's been what it's been, and, you know, we are where we are. But when you look at something unique like a hurricane situation where Osceola is then also affected, it becomes, I think, an additional component to the argument to say, and by the way, here's another example of how not only have we been, are we, but yet we will be or may be again in the future because we can't predict when and if these things are going to come up. And if the formula isn't fixed and some of these pieces aren't reconciled within it, um, we are destined to once again feel like we're on the losing side of a financial conversation in comparison to some of our more property rich neighbors across the state of Florida. So I agree with you and I think it becomes part of our overall legislative priority package to add this as one of those key components that we can bring to light as an example of how we're adversely affected. This is a pretty strong example. Yeah, I agree. Mr. Woodard, just, just a second, Mr. Woodard, I'd, I'd like to comment. I, you know, I certainly don't believe in talking with Congressman Soto. I, I know that this isn't how the funds were intended to be spent and divvied up among the state. I actually accept, I accept the recommendation. I know exactly where you're coming from. And I am bored just so you know, I did have this conversation with Mr. Krumpenbacher earlier in the day. I, sir, I guess my question will be, Dr. Pace, because I know we because I know we had this conversation earlier uh, a few weeks ago, months ago about these funds is that it wasn't just the FEFP that we received to, to uh, uh, man, I don't want to use the word regular student, but just a normal student moving in. There were extra services provided to these students where there, I know there's an ELL cap and we probably are, uh, well, I know we're always above that. Uh, are there things like that, the cap, the extra, we know we had teachers all across this district doing extra work to help uh, fill the gaps and, and educate these kids. They did a fantastic job. We, uh, so I appreciate that, and that's it's kind of what this was all about. So is, are there those expenses that we incurred? I think that's what Mr. Krumpenbacher maybe is getting to, that there are possibly expenses above and beyond the FEFP that should be taken care of. Is there any way to quantify that or there's not? It would be very, very, very challenging difficult. to do, sir. As, as you know, our staff really absorbed so much of that stress and pressure because we were not able to identify enough high quality teachers to bring them in. We weren't able to start building more classrooms or bring in more portables because the needs were immediate. Correct. <coughs> and we didn't know how short term or long term those needs were going to be. So I'm very, very proud of what this community and the school district and our team did to serve these students and their families. We're continuing to do the best we can for them. It is frustrating um, to know the level of, of effort and energy and enthusiasm with which this community embraced our friends from Puerto Rico as a result of the hurricane. And, and to be quite honest, somewhat frustrating in that, as you know, um, there wasn't a tremendous level of support from others at, at that particular time. We, we, we just did what we had to do. Right. And, um, but to be able to quantify it in terms of seeking sure. more funding, all asking, those types of things, yep. you know, it's, it's more an emotional argument, I think, right now than we can actually make a logical, rational, so, factual. Emotional based. arguments don't win. No, they don't. <laughs> I Mr. Think Wheeler. That's, that's our point. Oh. <laughs> Listening to hey. Mr. Kruppenbacher and Mr. Thacker and Mr. Weissar and Mr. Booth and Dr. Pace, the one thing that, you know, common thread is that we've got a flawed formula. I mean, that's really a common thread. So for purposes of um, discussion, as long as we're on this, what is the downside of us having a proclamation of this formula is flawed, here's why, and here's what the formula should be, and here's what we should be getting? I mean, you know, so, because on a fundamental level, that's what we're, you know, we're not talking about dollars as much as methodology to get them and, the, and pardon my language, but be direct, we're just getting, everybody agrees we're getting screwed. One way or the other, we're just getting, we're getting the short end of the stick. So with that said, what's the downside of a proclamation saying, okay, here's the formula you're using, this is why it's wrong, this is what it should be, this is what we should be getting. 
Mr. Thacker? I guess it's, it's just disheartening when I think we've probably got some of the best teachers in the state or the country here that did above and beyond the call of duty for students, for kids who needed help. They didn't request anything. The, the big issue is we've not been able to do a lot more than financially for the last several years. Uh, we've also been piling other mandates on them, and we have added a huge amount of stress to a extremely volatile, stressed situation. And I don't think there was any recognition for that amount of stress our teachers are, are feeling and have been feeling. And maybe it wouldn't be quite as bad had we not had that additional burden, which was a massive burden on top of not just the teachers, but the paras, the staff, the administrative staff, who all did far more than they normally do. And quite frankly, all students were probably shortchanged a little bit by the fact that there was a focus. All students, the ones who were uh, in need and the ones who, uh, the, the, the normal students that were here every day, that uh, probably didn't get some of the attentions and the help they needed to. So I think it's terribly unfair for whatever that's worth, not much. Uh, as, well, <clears throat> thank you all. Mr. Krumpenbach, you had a second item? Yes, I just wanted to update the board on the health clinic. Um, I will be sending a letter this week to Florida Hospital advising them that it is my interpretation that the agreement will automatically expire sir end of april and end of april um, unless this board was to decide to give notice of its desire to have an extension of the agreement in addition to that we have currently uh, set out and have been in the process of obtaining the agreements that exist and the way in which other districts are operating health clinics. I think we've identified about four so far that have them so that as we come back to you, we are fully informed with the best approach that Dr. Pace and, and the experts think to recommend going forward. And we're talking with the Rosen Group, and we will keep you advised as we move down the road. But I wanted you to know that in case you get called about the letter. And the reason for that is I, want, I don't want to hear the partner in this deal coming back saying they have a different interpretation. If you do, tell us now, because if they do, then there's a different notice they'll get. And so uh, keeping you posted. Thank you. I'm good. With you. Thank you, sir. We appreciate that. I'll, yeah, I was going to bring that up. The sidewalk petition? Oh, yes. Thank you. Um, I do not recommend uh, that you endorse or sign a sidewalk petition. Uh, these issues surface in multiple situations. There's a statute, 1006, which talks about if a uh, superintendent can invoke a process which I'll confer with her about, that brings in the county and the local law, and they look to decide whether or not there is an unsafe condition and then what steps can or can't be taken. But the process is not a political one uh, for the purpose of the school board. It's, uh, you've got situations all over the place, and uh, you've kind of got to work these issues. So. Uh, it's been looked at. Dr. Pace was out of town. We're going to brief her with what we know, but I don't recommend the board get into approving a petition uh, on a topic of this nature. Board, any any uh, questions, comments for Ms. Krebelbacher? Thank you, sir. We appreciate it. Dr. Pace? Just very quickly, board members, last week I sent to you a um, long-range financial forecast document mm -hmm. from Jim Hamilton. Um, our consultants with you, with you, Jenia, or <laughs> Eusenia, Eusenia Rutledge. It has a very detailed report if you have not had a chance to look at it in depth. <coughs> he also in that gives um, some potential suggestions for things that boards might consider for legislative priorities. If you remember, at our last legislative workshop, the board decided based on 
the speculation of who will be in, in office come November that it would be best to wait to finalize your, your strategies and approaches. But there were two particular pieces in there, one regarding the, the, the RLE, the required local effort, and then another one regarding the way the safe schools allocation dollars are um, s distributed that I would encourage you to look at. And then perhaps at our next meeting, we may want to go ahead and set up your next legislative workshop so that you could finalize priorities, um, if not before the end of the year, shortly after the first of the year. So, board, do we... Uh would we like to set up a workshop today, November? Sure. Let's, uh, you only have the one meeting in November, sir, on and November And we already have 13th, a bunch of workshops, right? And we have a facilities update as well as then the student progression plan. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. You do have two. You have November the 6th and November the 13th. I apologize. Do we have anything on November the 13th? Yes. That's when you have the two meetings, um, the okay. facilities and the student progression plan. November the 6th, nothing. Board? Well, my only question would be we have a new board member coming on on the 6th. Could they participate in the workshop? Actually, no, she doesn't come on to the 13th. the 13th. Oh, correct. the 13th. Okay. Okay. So we. Your meeting in December is December the 18th. We could certainly allow. Um, allow Ms. Castillo if we if we so chose to. No. I don't, I don't know what the rules are there. She couldn't vote. Which she, could she couldn't vote, but certainly. Um, Typically, Certainly. it's something that you guys haven't necessarily voted on as much as yep. reach consensus. Yep, and she, she, she should uh, certainly try to be here if she could and, and, and participate. And certainly, we would welcome her uh, comments and suggestions as she will be joining the board. So you'd want to have a discussion 13th. on November the 6th? I think so. I, I'd certainly love to wait for her to be sworn in, but that only leaves us with that one meeting. Committee December. weeks are going to be already going on. Yeah, and I think we need, and we need to get it done because we need that we need that legislative priority list uh, in those in, in in our representatives. How hands. long do you want to allow for? Two hours? Two, one I'd of? say two. Don't you think? Three okay, so November the sixth at three o'clock. Uh, Mr. Soto, <coughs> Mr. Wheeler, are you going to be here at three o'clock on um, November sixth? No. Okay, so you can come right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. Weissire, how are you looking? You saying for three? You're looking now? No, I'm looking now. Yeah, I fly home on the fourth. I'm good. Okay. So, Mr. Thacker, we're not worried about you now because we've got too many already that said yes. No, okay. I'm joking. I'm, I'm for sure. I'll let you scroll through there. You're good? Okay. I'm good too. Um, so, there we go. Would you like to have any of our lobbyist representatives here at that meeting? Uh, it, All, some, none? You know, invite them I would invite them, but I would say if they can't be, we're not going to schedule around them. Okay, so perfect. Here it is at this time. If you can be here, please be here. If you can't, that's fine. Certainly, I'd love to have their advice uh, moving forward. I want to invite Mr. Gillum and Mr. DeSantis. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> we're going to have a debate right here. I didn't say that. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. <laughs> All right, Dr. Pace, is that it? That's it. All right. So, board, we do not have any unfinished business. We do not have any new business. <laughs> have our... We have our student representative. I know, board member comments. I know, I was getting there. Uh, give me time. Give me time. <laughs> Young man? Yes, sir. You want to like, go up there or... No, oh, sure. all right. Uh, you... Uh, first and foremost, I'd like to express what an honor it is to be here and how grateful I am to have this opportunity. An opportunity that allows me to not only learn at a district level, but to sit on the board, which makes me feel like I have a voice. And I feel like the continuation of this program will allow, will actually solve a problem that we haven't really tackled. The closing the gap between the administration and high officials to students. It feels like it gives students a voice, and that's just a wonderful thing. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Now, how many, do you have how many more meetings do you have? Oh, this is actually my last. This meeting. is your last one, yeah. and you've enjoyed your time here. I've loved it. It's been an honor. Yep. This is a really high level board. We operate on a high level. Uh, Mr. Soto, would you would you have any comment? As you go. No, no, no. You're all good. Yeah, let's keep it happy. I know. I I do support 
this program, Dr. Face. I want to thank you for bringing it back. It's been a pleasure to have you here, and uh, thank you for being here. We and appreciate it. And we have it. promised Peter that we will get his name tag ordered, and to him at Point Dana High School, I will take it and deliver it personally on behalf of the board. And the good news is you sat next to uh, Ms. Culver, who really is the smartest one up here. <laughs> <laughs> well, she keeps it done. So we will finish up with any, any uh, board member comments or committee reports. Uh, so... Mr. Wheeler? I'm good. Mr. Wheeler? <laughs> Mr. Soto, no, 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 you good? <laughs> Mr. Thacker? Hi, I'm good. Mr. Weishire? Just a quick, did I update you guys on the uh, legislative yes. platform yes. stuff yes. last meeting yes. with FSBA? Yes. Thank you, you, Cosmonaut Soto. <laughs> <laughs> I'm holding this thing in my hand. I could repeat, oh, did, I could actually repeat it. You did not me. update us on UCF football, though. We won, uh, <laughs> as did the Knowles. Uh, no, I just wanted to make sure. If I've already updated you, that's fine. <laughs> you did, and, I, and I received the uh, platform booklet in my mailbox uh, today. Good. Did you get yours already? Yes. Congratulations. Thank you. All right, board. Stand. Stand. Good job, guys. <laughs>